Zion's Church is undergoing phase two of the restoration project. Uh, Zion's Church began here on the corner in, in the mid 1920s. And since that time, since the completion of construction in, in the 40s, there have been various issues to the building that we've addressed. Some not so successful, some successful. Uh, the problems we're addressing now are the failure of the concrete. The construction was basically three materials, granite, limestone, and concrete. Concrete typically has an age of a lifespan of about 100 years. We're reaching that time span now, and we're noticing that the concrete is breaking down in certain areas, some more than others depending on the amount of weather that it gets. So we're getting the, the bad areas removed and replaced with a lime mix. And uh, hopefully this is gonna last for a while. This part you see behind me was phase one was done in 2017. Hi, this is Andy DeGrucci. I'm in Tamaqua at Zion uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church and on Mock Chunk Street in Greenwood. And uh, I was called in here uh, maybe six or eight years ago uh, to look at some conditions that were occurring on the church. Uh, this church was uh, built uh, turn of the last century and uh, there was an option on the table at the time to uh, do a lot of the trim details around the stone, uh, uh, the, the, the entire stone structure, the, the um, trim elements which are around window surrounds and door surrounds and to do them not out of Indiana limestone which is traditional but to use a new material that's come out uh, it's called cast stone it's a stone where God makes uh, Indiana limestone and limestone and stones but man decides okay we think we can make stones ourselves and they decide to make cast stone which is basically concrete stone so uh, sounded good because there was cost savings involved and the church uh, did do that well-meaning and uh, seemed like a good thing to do but as a hundred years went by we see that these cast stones are exfoliating and falling apart and uh, causing uh, some uh, dangerous situations uh, the church uh, had been aware of that and uh, had tried to remedy the situation a few times um, the uh, issue seemed to get worse uh, some of the, the new patches were falling off. So we are called in and uh, we, we are bringing to the table what was our remedy. Uh, my business has been uh, restoring historic brick and stone buildings for 35 years. I'm in Quaker Town. Um, and uh, I went to Williamson Trade School and masonry has been my entire life. So all I know is restoring old buildings. Uh, it's not to say that we always would have the absolute perfect uh, answer to everything. But a lot of times the, the simplest answer and the original answer was the best answer. And that answer for masonry is usually to do things the old way, the traditional way. And so we're known in our work at DeGrucci Masonry Inc. as doing work that uses traditional materials like lime mortars that don't contain modern, modern Portland cement. Um, these stones that are cast stone on the church were built with a early cement. Uh, there's a difference between early cement and even the modern concrete we'd have today it's not the same uh, the things that make a cement uh, meet uh, what will be uh, designated as portland cement might have fillers that are like fly ash and things that uh, still make you get under the wire as meeting the minimum requirements but cause all can cause all kinds of other issues that we didn't expect or know and they're finding out so as things get better and better and new and improved, they find out it's worse and worse and we should have just done what we always did for like a thousand years. Uh, and that was use real stone if we can. But in some cases, like at this church, the cost for full unit replacement, and we run into this all the time, where uh, to get brownstone or to get limestone or to get uh, st stone, any stone, that where the quarries are closed and we can't get the stone. And then if we want to get the stone, it's three and four hundred dollars a ton. And then if we get them, we have to shape it. And we have to do tons of work. Um, this is makes it very cost prohibitive to do total unit replacement. So it was on the table for the church to, to think about taking out all the cast stone and putting in limestone. It's astronomical. They probably, to save me a heart attack, they didn't tell me any figures they may have gotten from other people, but I'm sure, I know, because we would have been one who could quote such a thing, 
but uh, the thing that we found is that there's a way uh, there are ways to uh, sort of take up stone loss by using uh, materials that we believe are going to give a long service life which is what the last group believe when they repaired cement with cement and the issue was that why the patches fell off in my opinion is that uh, sulfates salts that expand uh, and water that's ever present in the stonework here for some reason which is still something they're trying to figure out where it is coming in from uh, all over but the the, uh, the concrete uh, gets an expansion that's going on within the concrete, and that concrete is then uh, you know the winter months when water freezes, it expands, and it will push off even the strongest patch. You know, in hydraulics, you can lift a car in the air in a hydraulic lift because it's uh, it's basically the power of uh, hydraulics and water. Uh, if it wants to freeze and move things, it'll dig the Grand Canyon, it'll move something right out of its way. So the patches are falling off, and the difference between our patches, the things that we're doing this go around, is that we import our base material from France, which is lime based. And lime, kind of like a piece of coral has holes in it, it is strong, it can be 3,000 psi, it can be very durable, but when it drinks water in, it releases water back out. And so the, the problem with modern cements is they become impervious and they hold water back in and don't let it out. Say, water, sorry, find another way. So a lot of times water says, guess what? I'm freezing, I'm gonna pop you right off the wall. And that's what's happened and we believe this go around with the repairs we've done where we have uh, taken off all the corroded, rotted patches and gone back to the original stone, we have then grain strengthened the original stone with something called water glass which goes in and sort of uh, takes up this the void this uh, space that's between the, uh, the the aggregate in the full matrix of what is that cast stone and then refurbishes it with uh, something that will stabilize or condition it before the repair so we did that and then we use an armature which is stainless steel threaded rods and wire and we actually in, uh, drilled into the, the cast stone and installed this uh, armatures. And then what we did was we used this material that has a higher vapor permeability than is modern Portland cement, and we repaired the stone. So we're, we're, we're trying to, in the end, give the repair all the hope that we can, belt and suspenders in repair, in that we are mechanically fastening it to the other stone but we're also, in a chemistry way, wanting it to not be so uh, rigid that it won't allow trap water to escape. And then we are also trying to stabilize first, before we did any of those two things, the uh, existing stone, uh, cast stone, before these repairs were made upon it. These columns here and everything have were deteriorated so much that we had to rebuild them with our litho mix. And these were probably taken all the way back to this wall right here, up and down. And we had to rebuild them and shave them and carve them on almost every window. We had to do that in order to make them uh, make them look as natural as we can, give them that rough look, aged look, and uh, finish it off, and make it look nice. Uh, some of these spots on the sides here have also been all rebuilt. And we've done a lot of rebuilding all the way around this building. Some of these here, all this underneath here, all these ledges were all deteriorating, falling apart. And uh, a lot of all that scroll work up here in the arches and stuff, we had to do all these up in here, falling apart, deteriorating. And uh, we were going to put our litho mix on there and uh, recarve that and tooled it and make it look original and natural. Same with everything here. All these windows, there's all four sides were really deteriorated. When we got in here, half of them were falling off. We were pulling out chunks by our hand, big chunks. Other parts, we were taking a demo hammer, getting all the loose stuff off here, and then putting our. Uh, we have a consolidant that we apply on there, water glass that hardens up everything underneath it. So when we apply our litho mix, it gets a nice hard bonding surface. We're not applying it to something loose that's gonna fall off in a couple years or whatever. 
tightens it all up and makes a nice bond. So when we got here, all these pieces here were falling apart and when we moved them, they just came right up off the shelf. They were all loose, deteriorating. We didn't figure there was any sense on rebuilding them. There wasn't enough good stuff left to rebuild them. So we rebuilt all these by hand, all this, all this one here. All these edges were gone and everything. All this was deteriorated and fell apart. We had to rebuild all that. Same with all this one. There was nothing left so deteriorated. It wasn't worth rebuilding again. This is the part of the building where they've used limestone in the construction. Uh, before the fellows started their, their repairs, the joints had opened up. Well, it, the, the caulking that was in there had shrunk and you could actually stick a pencil between the, the joint that was there. So they, that was all removed and, and replaced, repointed during the process here. So here we are at the top of the scaffolding and we're looking over at the corner tower and that still exhibits the problem of between the Indiana limestone that was uh, a good material that was used originally, uh, it had caulk in between the stones and you can see the big gaps between the stones. So we had to take all of that out and um, we, uh, as you can see, the dirt on the stones as well. We cleaned them all and then repointed in a lime mortar the uh, Indiana limestone and every other trim element. Uh, and we also then repaired the exfoliating trim elements. And then this is a condition of, of the tower we are working on where you see the clean condition of the stone. The, the caulk has been removed and lime mortar is put in. And then the trim elements that uh, uh, go between the uh, corners of the ventilation of this uh, tower. Uh, you can see uh, how we repaired those. One of the changes that we made to the project was the installation of louvers in the opening. In the past, there was just uh, chicken wire on it, which kept the birds out, but it didn't keep the dirt and bulk of the moisture out. And our goal was to minimize the moisture going in there because in, the water had penetrated through the porous concrete and got underneath the roof in there and created some other issues. So we were hoping that the, the louvers, the addition of the louvers will help to minimize the water in on that roof. So here on the major field of the wall is granite stone and this is a ribbon joint it's called. Uh, so what we did while we have this expensive scaffold up and we're repairing all the cast stone elements, we went around where things are broken or missing and we chiseled out further and prepared the joint and then we made some color simulations of a lime mortar with uh, an aggregate of sands that simulate the remainder of the mortar, maybe 80% that's still intact and working. And we tried to uh, get our mortar, the replacement mortar, to blend in with the original. Uh, right now, the ribbon has been established and we have done all this work. However, there's a, a sort of a halo of hazing that's on the stone yet. Uh, that's because uh, if this is original mortar and this is lighter in color, we have not yet done an acidic clean down that we do, which uh, basically, since rainwater is acidic, and that's what raises the aggregate over 100 years, we're going to help to bring up some of the aggregate, which will bring out some of the color and remove the halo of staining of the lime uh, mortar, and that will help the area to blend in. So this is what we did, uh, an ex example of the ribbon joints we did on the field of the wall, which is everywhere where the trim elements are not. We're now coming to the close of phase two, which was the rest restoration of the chime tower. We still have the bell tower, which is the corner tower, and the window in between the towers to do yet, and the section from the chime tower up off Chunk Street to the corner of the building. Uh, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. I'm always around somewhere. Thanks. So I, I've been doing masonry my whole life. I, I really do and like the trade and I like uh, that we're involved with architectural preservation uh, that is, of course I make a living from it uh, but beyond that you know I'm a preservationist at heart I love to see these communities restore their iconic buildings uh, like this is an iconic building in Tamaqua 
uh, we did the rail station uh, back, uh, it was burned in 74, and uh, we came, I think it was 1999 or something, uh, restored that, and it just gives hope to the community when they start to see people having faith in their community and sort of loving it back to life, and uh, when churches uh, with a high tower uh, glisten again, it's like a beacon of hope to tell the community that we care, and we're here, we've been here for a long time, we're gonna stay here, and so it kind of puts wind in our sails, even though we're just the hands that do this work, we're masons, but uh, it's uh, sort of like, a, uh, has a meaning to our mission and what we do, in that it, uh, it's not just work, it's kind of God's work, so it's, it's uh, fulfilling.